but <laughs> member. <laughs> It'll stay up while I'm moving and grooving. <laughs> There are so many men's shirt hacks available online. It's so inspiring when you can just take an old men's shirt that you've thrifted, found in your man's closet, or you can just buy a crisp white one or a pattern that you like and transform it into any sort of top, skirt, dress that you like. I love making them into tops. I refashioned this one that Julian just never wore anymore and it's super cute. So I'm gonna take one of these shirts and make it into a long sleeve bralette because in the last season of Style Revive, that bralette was one of my favorite projects and I just keep wanting to sew more. I think this one should be pretty easy. Because this shirt is bigger, I need to cinch it in with elastic and I don't want the pocket getting all gathered. So I'm actually just going to remove the pocket from my shirt using a blade stitch ripper. And I'm just gonna make sure to be really careful because I don't want to make a hole in my new bralette. And if you see holes, forming the stitch holes when you remove, if you do have a pocket, just some steam and pressing should help close those gaps. And when this top is all ruffled and gathered in using elastic, you will barely notice the holes anyway. So I have my pocket removed, but I don't wanna throw it away. Who knows, in another project coming up, I can now embroider it and put it on something else. So I'm always going to save my little scraps. So now you will want to lay your shirt nice and flat, making sure that the yoke is extending an equal amount on either side and that the sleeve seams are matching up because we are gonna cut down and across to get that nice square neckline and we're gonna gather in the sleeves too. It's gonna be such a pretty bralette. And you wanna make sure you have your underarm points. So I'm gonna measure up five inches from my underarm point going up my armhole and placing a mark. And I'm just gonna curve my ruler so I get that point. I'm just gonna mark it with a little notch. I'm going to do that on both sides. Then I'm gonna use a ruler to connect those points. And you wanna make sure, depending on your button spacing, you want at least two inches above the button because we're going to fold it down to create a casing. So you don't want to draw a line here because you will have the button in the way to create the casing. So you can use the two inch guide or if the five inch marks line up, you can just draw a straight line. I'm just gonna do some dashes here. And now from this line, I'm going to measure down about 12 inches because I want a large casing. So I'm gonna make my bralette about 12 inches long. So I'll just measure down 12 inches on several spots here. Okay, so we have five inches up from the underarm point and then from that line, 12 inches down. And now I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm gonna cut my bottom line. And remember never to throw away your scraps because I think I might be able to do something with this too. I'm gonna cut from this marking up and then over and then up. I already love the silhouette of this top and the neckline. It's gonna turn out so good. There's really only a couple seams to sew, a casing in the hem, casings in the front and then back, as well as the sleeve. Oh, look at this cute collar I still have. And you, you bet I'm gonna try and use this in something else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pin this closed. So in order to finish and then create casings on our front and back square neckline, I'm just gonna cut down further into the sleeve about one inch so we can fold that down.
So now we are ready for sewing. I am going to serge finish the front and the back as well as around my hem and my sleeves. And then we're going to press up the bottom and the top one inch and do two rows of stitching so we can thread in elastic. I'm gonna be using elastic that's about 3 eighths of an inch wide, but you can use any width of elastic that you have on hand. So let's thread up our sewing machine in white thread, and there's really only a couple things to do because using a ready-to-wear garment, we already have our sleeves finished, we already have our buttons in place. I just love upcycling. So once all the edges are surged, and if you don't have a serger, don't worry, just use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, press up the casings about one inch. And I like to use a sewing gauge to help me. Around the sleeve crown, make sure you only press the width of your elastic. So in my case, my elastic is 3 eighths of an inch, so only press that amount on the sleeve. It doesn't matter if some tucks are around your sleeve crown because it's all going to be gathered in anyway. Once everything is pressed and pinned, you are ready to go to your sewing machine. So I have my machine all threaded up in a matching thread and for these wide casings at the top, I want some edging. So I'm gonna stitch close about an eighth of an inch away from that edge and then right on top of my elastic. So I have about five eighths of an inch of the pressed edge. So my elastic casing will sit closer to the surging. So I'll stitch one seam right in the middle of the surging and then three eighths of an inch away from that. But around the sleeves, I'm just gonna stitch three eighths of an inch around that crown right here. And we want two rows of stitching for the hem in the top and then just one for the sleeve. I think I'm going to activate my laser to help me stitch it's nice and straight. Laser activated. Just make sure you leave a small half inch opening on your first casing seam so you can thread the elastic through. So you'll have two rows of top stitching. For the top casings, you wanna leave this side edge open. So I'm just gonna stitch my second row 3 eighths of an inch beside it. So now that I have all the casings sewn down in place and I left an opening on the front and back neckline sides as well as each one of the sleeve seams so we have space to thread in our elastic and the hem one gets threaded in a circle. So what you can do to kind of base how much elastic you're going to need is just take the elastic and wrap it around your body to a comfortable width and then you know roughly how much elastic that you'll need for that bottom one. So we'll start with that one. So just put a safety pin on one end of the elastic and through that opening, just thread it through. And with the other end of the elastic, I just like to pin it so I don't lose it in my casing. When you get back up through the opening, just pin your elastic ends together and then the rest can thread in. So 
So I have my hem all elasticated, and so now I'm just gonna take a strip and thread it through the top. For the front and back neckline gathers, you want to see a little bit of elastic on either opening, and then pin and stitch down in place just to secure the elastic. And sometimes at this point, I pin all of my elastics and then I try it on with some allowance to see if I need to adjust any of the elastic, make it looser or tighter. So before I cut and stitch my elastic, just give it a little quick try on. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread my sleeves in the same way, leaving some allowance and my back neckline. And then I will stitch all of the elastics down in place and it's done. I tried it on, all the elastics are even and fit my body. So I just am going to stitch down each opening to catch the elastic and close the opening. And for the hem, I'm gonna stitch the ends of the elastic together, push it in the opening and then stitch that opening closed and it's gonna be all done. So let me just finish these elastic secure stitches up. So now that I have all my elastic stitched down in place, my bralette from a men's shirt is complete. But I still have these pieces that I cut off from the shirt and I feel like they're usable somehow. I just, I'm out of ideas. I have the collar, I have the bottom half of the shirt. I, I think I might need to call in my friend, Michelle Matsumoto, because she does so many awesome things. Yeah, I'm gonna go get her on Zoom and we'll figure out what we can do with the rest of the shirt so I don't have any waste. All right, where's my computer? Hi, Michelle, thanks for joining me today. Hi, how are you? I'm so good. I desperately need your help. I know from seeing your Instagram, you are so good at doing all these different projects, not even with fabric, oh. but with, yeah, everything. You're always recycling, upcycling, making things work. So I knew you were the perfect person to call. And I'm doing a men's shirt hack. I did a little bralette with oh, elastic. So yeah, well, thank you for having me on today and I would love to discuss some options because I'm definitely working on something right now with it too. So yes. share with me your ideas. Yeah, well, I don't know. I just really wanted um, a bralette. So I made these little casings, but I have these little bits and bobs left over from cutting up my shirt. So I have this piece, which is just the collar. So I don't really know what I can do with that. And then I have the bottom portion, which I'm not really sure what to do with. I see you, I mean, let's let's see what you've done with your men's shirt. Yeah, so I took a men's shirt and I decided that, I don't know if you've ever seen lately the trend with the shoulder pads. Yes, well, I have, yeah. So I ended up taking off the sleeve, but left the top portion by tracing the um, shoulder pad onto one sleeve. Let me go ahead and show you there. So tracing it to create like a facing in a way, so an all-in-one facing to hide the shoulder pad. Um, the one good thing about you know men's dress shirts is that they actually have a deeper armhole yeah. creating space for the shoulder pad. So if this is something that you would want to try out, super easy, takes about five minutes. And then I also decided to add a little bit of flair to the collar by adding the book corners, metal corners to the uh, corners of the collar. So easy and it should only take like five or 10 minutes to do. Oh, that is such a good idea. I see that shoulder pad trend everywhere and they're kind of expensive when you see them in stores and online, but so easy to make. And then you can customize what, you know, how big you want to go with your shoulder pads. Exactly. 
Yeah. For me, I know I do like a shoulder pad, but not the biggest shoulder pad out there. So this is a way to customize your, you know, shoulder pad look to your liking. Yeah, I think I'll be doubling up my shoulder pads. I like bigger the better. <laughs> yeah. So that's you know that uh, color piece that you have. Yeah. So I wanted, I had an idea. Yes. Have you ever seen a lot of people use those dickies or the removable collars? Oh yeah. I think you could totally cut that up and uh, create one for yourself and just do some embellishing on the collar area Ooh. with some rhinestones, some, you know, uh, pearl and studs and oh, that's spruce a good it idea. up. And that's another idea for the collar area. Yeah, so I could just kind of cut the sides and finish them. Or right. would you leave it long? I guess I would cut a little, trim a little bit into the shoulder. I would probably think about cutting, uh, cutting it off mid chest, or even take a look at your neckline on whatever you're putting it under. That's a good idea. Um, for sure that. And all you have to do is just serge it. I mean, no one's going to see that those edges, and then you're good to go. And also to keep it in place, you could add elastic or some ties. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think. Yeah, I think I will. I think I have some sweaters that, yeah, might just need a little pop of collar and some embellishment where I don't want to wear a full shirt underneath. Sometimes it's just exactly. too many bulky, bulky layers. Oh, I'm so doing that with this little collar piece. But now I have this little piece too. I was thinking I wanted a skirt. If I had a longer men's shirt, I could totally use this as a skirt, but I think it's a little too short. So I kind right. of am running out of ideas. So one of the ideas I was thinking about was you could either gather it up using an elastic channel and creating a tube top. Oh, um, yeah. Or even cutting those up in half and then creating flutter sleeves, kind of similar to my the sleeves on my shirt where you would just attach it to a tank top or to another shirt oh. and you could have it another sleeve. Oh, that's an idea where I just take, yeah, I just use this as a sleeve pattern, but I like the idea because it is long enough for me to make another little top. Maybe I'll try that. Do some, do some gathers or elastics. That could be so much fun. One of the things I want to probably um, mention too, that if you're ever looking at a shirt that you want to refashion or restyle, um, take your measurement and add like a minimum ease of two inches. Um, and that will give you enough r wiggle room to um, create anything you want with the shirt. Right, because yeah, you would want the shirt if you're doing a men's shirt upcycle, if you're looking in the thrift store or your husband's closet, in my case, right. I was digging through that. You want it to be bigger, uh, bigger than uh, your, your usual size that you would wear for a fitted blouse. Yeah, that's a, that's a great rule. All right, well, thank you so much. I have so many ideas that I can use both of these pieces. So I'm literally using every little bit of my blouse. I've tr I can turn it into three things with one shirt. I have a bralette. I'm gonna make another kind of tube that. top and a little collar dicky. I think I have some pearls that I'm gonna add that's gonna be super cute. Oh, I can't wait to see it. Yes, and I am definitely doing that shoulder pad hack 100%. That's such a good idea. Thank you. All right, thanks. I can't wait to show you the end results. Um, and where can people find and follow you to get more ideas and inspiration? You can find me on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram, which my handle is winmichelle, W-I-N, and my name is Michelle. Um, you can find me in stories showing behind the scenes of all of the creative stuff that I've been dabbling in. Oh, so many creative projects. Thanks again and have a fabulous rest of your day. <laughs> you, you too. See you Bye. later. I loved the idea that Michelle had to turn this bottom part into another little tube top. I think that's so fun. And Instead of elasticating it, I thought since I have this opening, why not gather it in to a strip of bias tape? I mean, it can bring in some color. I do love a classic white shirt, but sometimes you just need a little pop of color and always green in my case. And then I dug through my button bin and found these matching buttons. So you can totally just swap out the buttons for new ones. And you just need to make sure that they'll go through the existing buttonholes. So these are around the same size. So I think they'll be, they'll be perfect. And I can just sew those right on with the machine. So I'm gonna open my bottom part and I've already stitched two rows of basting stitches. 
and I am just gonna start to gather it in. I'm just gonna gather it in a little bit because I'm going to sew it to this bias tape. And actually, before I start gathering too much, I'm going to wrap this around my upper bust to get the length. If you have a dress form, you could wrap it around that too. So you want it to be not too tight, but not too loose because it's not elasticated. But maybe I'll add little spaghetti straps too. I'll see how it looks when we've gotten to this point. So just over and underlap it a little bit and give yourself a little excess. So I'm just gonna cut that. And I'm going to find the center back. So I have a nice even gather. So I'm just gonna fold this in half to find my center back. And then I'm gonna take my top, I guess I can call it a top now, <laughs> and half that so I find my center back. And I can pin these together so we have an even gather from center back to center front on either side. Then I'm going to pin with about half of an inch of allowance because I'm going to want to wrap it to the back to have a nice clean finish. So around half of an inch. And I'm just using pre-pressed bias tape and it's a finished width of half of an inch and so it's two inches unfinished. So you can make your own, you can buy it pre-pressed. So now, I have some parameters to gather into. I'm so excited I'm gonna be getting two tops <laughs> out of the one men's shirt. So now I'm just gonna match that top gathered edge to the middle fold of my bias tape and then fold it down, pin in place. And don't worry if your basting stitches show through a little bit after you top stitch it in place, you can just remove that because the gathers are already secured. I like to use a lot of pins <laughs> for this step. And then just repeat on the other side. So now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and just top stitch along that binding so I'm catching all those gathered edges in place. And I'm also just going to trim off these buttons so I can sew on my new ones using my machine. I'll definitely save and add these little buttons to my stash. I might need them for another project. All right, I'm gonna head to the sewing machine and there's really only one seam to do and then we are done. And just install a little snap to keep the top closed. I just couldn't wait to try on my new bralette. I love all the elastic casings because it makes it super comfy and adaptable, especially around the sleeves. We have that enlarged sleeve crown in the men's shirt and now it's nicely fitting with a few gathers. And with it being so nice and neutral in a crisp white, I can virtually wear it with any of my bottoms. I just, oh, could wear it with these culottes. Oh, this skirt. Look at that. That could 
be fun. Oh, so many options. I could, oh, wear it with that. I could basically just pick anything from that side of my closet and this bralette will match it. But I really also wanna try on my tube top using the same fabric from the same shirt as this bralette. So I'm gonna go try that on and see what I can wear it with. I also love this tube top that I made from the bottom of the shirt. I secured the top with a little snap because we have a little bit of space between the top button and the top of our shirt. So you're gonna wanna use that or a little piece of Velcro would work too. But it's super cute. It works with all my high-waisted pants. You could even layer it over a long sleeve shirt. But I think I'm gonna add some straps to this one. I did go ahead and make another one with little tie straps and I changed the buttons to black buttons that match the binding. And I think I'm gonna do the same strap treatment or maybe a halter style on this one, but you could totally leave it as a tube top because it's gathered to fit that upper bust measurement. It's super comfy and just perfect for those hot summer days. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Style Revive where I took a men's shirt and trans transformed it into three different things. If you want to see how I transform my collar with embellishments, make sure to head over to SewDaily.com to see the dedicated blog post. I will also include all the measurements from my first bralette transformation. So be sure to check that out and we'll see you next time.